In this video, I'm going to give you an outside and inside tour of the cabin in the woods behind me where I live with my wife and daughter. I first started building this cabin at age 18. I always had a love for the wilderness and living off the land and had this dream that I wanted to build my own place. So I took a piece of our family acreage here in the woods and started to build this. I built it from the ground up by myself for the most part, starting with stone foundation pillars, which you can see down here. These are right on bedrock. Bedrock was quite close to the surface in this area, luckily. So there's no basement in this cabin, just a straight stone foundation on bedrock. And this section here was the original cabin. And this originally was going to be the only building that was here. Eventually, I decided to add on to the cabin. And you can see this second section over here that we call the addition. That is new. And that wasn't part of the original plan. It became part of the plan when a family came along, when I got married and decided that I wanted this to be more than just an off-grid backwoods hunting retreat. This is the north and west sides of the cabin. And you can see we have an, an electrical meter base here. This cabin is hooked up to the electrical grid with great difficulty. My dad and I spent a very unpleasant several days digging a trench through the forest here to the nearest spot where there was electrical service, encasing the line in concrete because the soil wasn't deep enough. And uh, so we are connected to the grid, which again, wasn't my original plan, but when families come along, plans change. You can see here that the cedar shingle siding I used on the original cabin is darker because it's older than the cedar shingle siding on the addition, which in fact is not even fully finished, as you can see here. I've still got to finish that. This back door here on the west side eventually will lead out to some sort of a mudroom or porch thing. That's why it's just in midair right now. And there's going to be most likely a clothesline leading out the back here towards this uh, wooded area. This is the south side of the building. And again, you can see the cedar shingles on the addition here still need to be finished up to the peak. Last summer, my wife and I decided to add to our deck, put a, an addition on our veranda so we could enjoy the outdoors more. So that's what this is here. Again, on stone foundation pillars, which are extending beyond the edge of the veranda so that they can double as foundation pillars for another addition to the house that we're planning over here beginning in spring. But this uh, extra bit of veranda, which is obviously currently snow covered, was a nice addition for us. We just started to get to enjoy it by last fall. So we're gonna spend a lot of time here in spring and summer. Let's go inside now and begin the indoor portion of this cabin tour. Before we continue with the rest of the cabin tour, I wanna let you guys know real quick that my father, Steve Maxwell, has a wonderful online course available on how to build this very cabin. He used the plans that I came up with when I was building this, and he explains everything you need to know using photos, text, and video to build a cabin just like this one. Not the addition, mind you, just the original cabin. So if you've got a cabin dream and you're not sure where to start, click the link in the description. My dad's course can definitely help you realize your dream. Now, on with the rest of the video. So, as I said, this section of the building was originally all I was going to build. It's uh, 16 by 20 feet, 25 feet counting the veranda outside. And it's got a little upstairs loft that I'll show you in a few minutes. But this was all I was gonna have before I decided to have a family and figured that we needed more space. In the corner here, we have our anthracite coal burning stove that we use to heat the place all winter. This window here is the only window I've currently installed trim on. I have been working away at that slowly. I need to do trim on the rest of the windows still. There are some things that still aren't finished. This white cabinet in the corner conceals our electrical breaker panel and we store some things in here as well. I actually built this cabinet from scratch myself. The kitchen cabinets come from Ikea. This is a sort of combination kitchen dining room space here in the main downstairs part of the building. Got our dining table over here in the corner, a fridge full of uh, our five-year-old daughter's artwork. And you can see in the opposite corner the rather unique set of stairs I built, and I'll tell you more about that later. 
There's a heavy six by eight beams forming the ceiling with whitewashed boards between to give it kind of an antique look. We did certain things to these beams to make them look old, but they're not actually old. The light fixtures were made by us as well using black iron pipe that we spray painted black and fitted with uh, Edison light bulbs. The idea was to give the place a sort of retro steampunk kind of look. So moving on to the addition, the newer section of the building, this doorway opening here, which obviously still needs trim installed around it, was originally a tall window. It originally was a window that matched the windows on the opposite wall there. But at the last minute, I decided to take the window out and make it this doorway opening and build another bit of living space over here. When, again, as I said, when I decided to have a family. So first we have our laundry facilities, washer and dryer and laundry sink and birch countertops that, um, that I sanded and finished myself. A little tiled hallway. And here at the left, at the end of the hallway, is the bathroom which we made kind of fancier than necessary for a backwoods cabin. And um, over here is the tiled shower. And that's pretty much the downstairs. Forgot to mention this great big dog cage in the middle of the room is for our puppy, Luna, who's still quite young and still in the training stage. She sleeps in there by her own choice at night. Now for the upstairs part of the cabin tour. These stair landings, which I made out of cherry wood in the wood shop, double as uh, storage areas. You can see it's kind of empty and hollow in there. And I've got some toolboxes and other things inside both of these stair openings. Oh, sounds like the dog wants to get in. Good timing. Hi, Luna. Oh, there go my boots. So back to the stairs. The stringers, or the, the frame of these stairs, uh, again, is made of black iron pipe that I sandblasted and did some welding. These uh, steel cutouts here, quarter inch thick plate steel, I commissioned, I designed these tree motifs to make it look interesting and uh, you know, welded the whole thing together. We had this unique problem that uh, the landing at the top of the stairs was quite close to the bottom landing. So the stairs had to be quite steep. So that led me to conceive of this ship slap stair design, which is quite common on boats and places where you need to save space, where the treads actually alternate from one side to the other, as you can see, which lets you ascend the stairs fairly comfortably, but you essentially save half the space that a normal staircase would take up. The railings, again, are black iron pipe that's welded together, and in this case, painted a glossy black. And going up the stairs, we have a, a gate at the top for child safety, since it is quite a drop, which can be opened or closed here. Upstairs, we have a hardwood floor, maple flooring here and this is obviously the roof of the original cabin again we have the alternating brown urethane rafters and whitewashed roof boards and a couple of skylights we always like letting light in and skylights are great for ventilation too we have um, these foam panels insulating the roof from the outside which is how we did it so we could make full use of the inside space and not have to cover the nice woodwork with drywall or anything like that. Here's uh, one of the beds we just have set up on the floor here. It's not a big upstairs space and as you can see it's somewhat cluttered because we're in desperate need of the additional house space that I'm planning to put on the south end of the building, as I said, starting in spring. Got some clothes hanging here and some puzzles here on the floor in the other section of the room, and this is the upstairs of the addition. You can see this doorway cutout, which again, still needs trim, is, uh, is a cutout through the roof of the original cabin. Those are rafters on either side. And 
this section here is kind of the main bedroom. Have an avocado plant here and some bookshelves and the main bed and then my, my daughter's bed here. And there she is, being a little bit shy. Hi, Lily. Hello. This room is also fitted with roof windows, four of them in this case, for both light and ventilation. They just pop open easily and we can get a nice view and some wonderful fresh air anytime we want. And because, uh, because this building has gables, even though it's not a big space in terms of floor area, we have lots of space, more than what we would have if it was just a regular triangular roof shape as the upstairs of the main cabin is. Kind of doubles our usable space effectively. And over here we have cat sleeping on the bed and some dressers and our second avocado plant. We like house plants here. And that is pretty much the upstairs. We really don't buy into a big fancy house in the city, three cars and a, a high-end fast-paced job as being the ultimate definition of success. And if you do, that's fine, totally respect it. But for us living right here, this is exactly on earth where we want to be. Well, thanks very much for watching this tour of Our Cabin in the Woods. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the Cabin in the Woods channel for lots more great videos.